and when the cry of the people of Israel had reached the heart of God, God was moved to act and he did. And among the remnants he found in the earth realm, he found Moses. I at us a kupanatani, one upon whom his anointing was upon to bring about the salvation and the liberation of the children of God from captivity. I I speak to someone today. You you may have lingered in that position of disrespect. You may have lingered in in that position of disdain or incapacity. But Jesus sends an answer to you. Jesus sends and answer to you anaku patashis ilepiku manatola eleka peteke poto hallelujah well that was just a snippet from the last healing meeting we had online on whatsapp do well to check it out today we'll be discussing about something quite different the discipline of the call and the called hallelujah amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just a brief charge. Steamed the call and the discipline of the called. The call and the discipline of the called. Sons are fainting. Heaven's messengers are growing weary. The strength of many are failing. But the master calls out, Arise. He says, get up and put on strength. Wake up, shake off the dust. Listen as I read these words to you in Hebrews 12. My child, don't underestimate the value of the discipline and training of the Lord God or get depressed when he has to correct you. For the Lord's training of your life is the evidence of his faithful love. And when he draws you to himself, it proves you are his delightful child. Fully embrace God's correction as part of your training. For who has ever heard of a child who never had to be corrected? We all should welcome God's discipline as the validation of authentic sonship. For if we have never once endured his correction, it only proves we are strangers and not sons. Let me re-emphasize that. If you are exempted from correction and discipline of which all of God's children share in, then you are illegitimate children and not sons at all. And isn't it true that we respect our earthly fathers even though they correct and discipline us? Then we should demonstrate an even greater respect for God our spiritual father as we submit to his life-giving discipline. Our parents corrected us for the short time of childhood as it seemed good to them of course. But God corrects us throughout our lives for our own good, and this he does in order to give us an invitation to share in his holiness. Now all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time, yet later it produces a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who are, who are trained by it and of course who yield to it. So be made strong even in your weakness by lifting up your hands, your weary and tired hands in prayer and in worship, and strengthen your weak knees. For as you keep walking forward on God's path, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. The question is, what discipline have you taken light? What admonition have you neglected? Are there nudgings you trivialized? Were there places you needed not to go? What call of consecration did you refuse to heed to? Are there things your eyes must not see? Are there places you are forbidden to go to? What discipline is your life subjected to? For Adam, his greatest undoing and fall was to consider the fruit in the middle of the garden. It was to this end Paul told us of his endeavor, personal endeavor, to put his body under subjection so that he will not preach the gospel and be a castaway. He was aware of the instructions that regulated his life and of course was aware of the disciplines that kept him alive and valuable in God's agenda. 
He knew the boundaries beyond which God's hand was not going to reach out in help. And so he subjected himself to dealings to keep his flesh and its cravings under subjection. We were told clearly in the scriptures how that so many things may be permissible but not all things are necessary and so we would not allow ourselves to be enslaved by nothing. Listen, in this kingdom many have lost value and usability in God's hands. For some of them their axe heads had gone blunt, for some their axe head had fallen and they saw or still see no reason to pick it up and for some they have completely turned away from the work. Jesus said, He that puts his hand to the plow and retreats or retracts is not fit for the kingdom. Remember that salts can lose their saltiness and they become useless and better trampled upon than used for benefits. Where are you is the question. What happened all of a sudden? You, 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 we, we knew you were walking on the right path. Who had deceived you to turn from the path? We no longer feel, we no longer can sense, we no longer can taste the savour of your presence. Oh, we were told that a man will come who would add flavour to our generation. We were told that a set of men and women were going to come prepared by God for a time as this. Could it be that you are here for a time as this? I tell you, if you do not arise, do not think your territory is safe. And so you must arise. Jesus calls you today. Arise is the call from heaven and preserve the ordination of God upon your life. Destinies, of course, are attached to your faithfulness to that call upon your life. Do not say, for I am a little one. Do not say, for I am small. Do not say, I cannot speak. I hear God say he will put his words in your mouth. He said, I will hold your hands and lead you there. I will go with you. The time to launch is now. Please return back to where you lost it. Return back to where you left off in your communion, in your communion and your communication with God. Return back to that place of consistency, intimacy and communion. Return that to that place. Return back to that place where your heart burned and burned and burned when you heard the master speak to you. Oh, for Jesus calls you this day. Jesus calls you this day.